my name is Nero, and today I'm going to be telling you about the average slope error function that I showed you in my gradient descent program. So, let's, so we're talking about the average, the average slope error. So, remember that video where I showed you about the skier or the, the, the skier going down the mountain? That is going to become very helpful in today's video. If you haven't watched that, then go back, review it quickly, and, and come back so that you can understand this very thoroughly. So, you have a graph. Uh, but, uh, the error at the y-axis and a, one of the constants at the x-axis. So, you have a big mountain and, and gradient descent has picked its spot. So it started here. This is random A. Now, of course, you want to get to the least error, which would be down here. But how are you going to do that? You can't just keep on walking forward, right? You, you can't do that. It just doesn't work like that. You have to angle your skis in a certain direction, because if you do it up, then you won't be going anywhere. So see that you have this. And then at that point, if you zoom in, then there'll be a slope and then there'll be a point where you're pointing to. And over here, you, you need to find the slope of this. So this is one point and you might be asking, how do you find the slope relative to one point? That is one point, you can turn it all you want. So, it's represented to a point because you have these two that are running through, you align like this, two dots that are running through your graph. But, if you do it really big, then it'll be here and here, which will be inaccurate. So, the distance, get smaller and smaller. And in calculus terms, which we'll need to use for gradient descent in this function, it the space between them tends to zero. It never gets to zero, but it tends to zero. So then, with a calculus equation, you can find the slope. Now, with your learning rate, you step in that direction. And then, there you go. The next point. The next point that you have. Now, one confusion that I had when I was learning about this is that what happens if you have a sudden drop? Right? What happens if you have a sudden drop? Then you're here and you're and you angle yourself like this. You take a little step and you're in mid-air. Now what do you do? You're in mid-air and gradient descent can't do anything because you're not on it. The thing is that all it does, it doesn't keep the x and y coordinates. It only goes down and it's like, this is the, this is the new a point. This is the new thing for A. And then when you come back in the next iteration, then, then instead of being here where you were before, you are now here. Because you have the A and with the function for a line and the air function, you figure out the air and you're right here. Now, one thing to note, this is seeming a lot like gravity. You are, this is an exact model of how you ski. Well, the thing is that gradient descent 
is basically gravity if you think about it. If it is a ball, then it will roll. And it'll keep on going back, 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 back. It'll go forward, backward, forward, backward, until it gets to the point where it can settle. Now, this is exactly what it's doing, except if it's super steep, it still, it doesn't move any quicker than if it's shallow. This is the basic gradient descent though, but different variations have made it so the steeper it is, the, fat, the bigger the learning rate or the faster the ball will roll. So, back to this line. You have a line here, and then you have a point. It's a point. So we are going to get a bit more in depth here. So, you have your, this is, this is, uh, this is your zoomed in graph, right? Then you have a dot here. Now you need to find the slope. You have two dots that are tending to zero. This tends to zero. It doesn't reach there, but it goes toward it. Now, the closer it gets, the more accurate it gets. Because if it's super, if, if it's all across, if it's at one point of the graph, the absolute highest and the bottom, then nothing will happen. But if you go, but then it's useless. But if you come really small, then that happens. So, this is called differentiation. differentiation. And, y is a function of x. So, to find it, you need to do the differentiation of y to the differentiation of uh, x and then y. So this you have to calculate and then you can find your answer. But we're, this is actually three dimensional, right? Because this is the average slope error. So it would be three dimensional with the a and b. So then it would be like, then it would be like z Let's say you have, so let's say you have z, which is a function of y. Then, and you want to find the differentiation of z and x. So that would be this, right? As a, just like I showed you earlier. But this, according to the chain rule of calculus, equals times As you can see, these two cancel out. So they're asking me, why are you making the equation bigger? Well, the thing is that when you're solving an equation, you want to get to the answer. So you want to make the simplest, you want to try to find the simplest way to do it. Well, in most cases, this is actually easier to work with. And as you can see, it doesn't change the equation at all. So with some programming, the other functions, and this chain rule of calculus, you can, you get the average slope error function, which is the heart and key of calculus. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and keep watching my videos for more fun information.